Okay, so let's start for today. Uh, today is our, oh, sorry. Okay, let me try one more time. Uh, So you can see my screen, right? So uh, today is our fourth time and then we have spent two weeks talk about Socrates. And then uh, last week we talk about general play, uh, Platonic philosophy. And this week we should finish uh, Plato's philosophy and we will focus on Plato's uh, politics. And the uh, reading I post on the web page is the uh, uh, Plato's uh, just state. Okay. So that's what we were going to start today. And I'd like to remind everyone this one, we, we have a right size of people. We have a 20 participant. And I think that's exactly a good number I like. Uh, doesn't mean if, you know, I don't want too many people, but so that's the right size. So I uh, encourage you to raise hand during the uh, presentation. And then if I ignore for too long, you can just, you know, uh, uh, say, hey, then I will stop uh, for answer. But please focus on the question on the uh, subject. Okay. So today we talk about Plato and the next week, we probably will spend two weeks talking about uh, Aristotle, and then we will move back to the pre-Socratic philosophy. So uh, the, the, this project, our, uh, hold on. okay, this project, we will focus on the, uh, this area. So so-called the Greater Roman philosophy and the basic the three area we will uh, focus is essence, Asia Minor and on the Sicily uh, Italian side. And uh, right now we're still on essence. So uh, three philosophers we will deal is Socrates, Plato and Aristotle. Uh, Aristotle. And then uh, this project, I try to focus on the book, okay? So last week we talked about, basically we talked about symposium, uh, Plato's dialogue and uh, features. And this week, uh, I mean today, okay, I will focus on uh, Plato's politics, so-called politics writing or his just state. And the basics, I try to cover two dialogue. One is Republic, one is uh, Timaeus. Okay. So it's, uh, be honest, it's, I don't think that's easy because uh, Republic has 10 books. Okay, so, uh, so today we cover Plato's and then we will move on to uh, Plato. So before I start and any question or anything, uh, uh, anybody want to talk about? Okay, so um, I will move on. So let's talk about Plato's writing. So Plato was born at 427 BC. And then he, I think he, when he was, he was, he was 43 years younger than Socrates. And he met Socrates at his age, about 18 years old. And Socrates was killed, sentenced to death at the year 399 BC. And then uh, Plato was about 30, uh, 38 years old. And no, uh, yeah. And then that, so Plato's writing, we can separate as a three area. We call it early dialogue, which is before Plato was uh, 40. Okay, so that's that uh, Protagoras, Apology, Crito, Euthyphro, Gorgias. Okay, so this uh, writing we consider as early dialogue. And then uh, after Socrates' death, and the Plato start to uh, 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 leave essence, and he travel, travel around the world, okay, and uh, for 12 years. When he come back, he found his school academy. And during that time, he also write a lot. 
like symposium, features, fiddles, communities, republic. Okay, so all this one he was writing, we consider as middle dialogue. All right. So you will tell, you can see the difference between early dialogue. The early dialogue, Socrates is the hero. Okay. He just talk and the talk and he question everyone. So in the middle dialogue, dialogue you will start to see um, uh, the voice still Socrates talking, but you can see the voice become Plato's voice. So basically we will assume the philosophy is not, is not Socrates uh, philosophy. So if someone, if you are not speaking, please mute yourself. So, uh, so that's the middle dialogue. And then uh, I think between when Plato was 60 to 60 years old, he went to uh, Syracuse, which is on the Italian side. He become an uh, educator. He tried to teach um, the uh, king uh, Dionysius II to become a philosopher kid, okay? So he spent six years over there and then turned out uh, the project failed. Then he came back to Athens. Then he started to write uh, a lot uh, to his death. So it's, right, he died at uh, 80 years old. So some dialogue we consider as later dialogue, that's the Timaeus. Philippus, Critias, Laws, uh, Sophist, Statesman. Uh, personally, I consider the later dialogue is very good dialogue. And unfortunately, not a lot of people pay attention on the later dialogue. And today we were going to focus on just two dialogue. One is the Republic, which is the most famous, and then Tiomius. So uh, these two uh, dialogue, that's what we are going to uh, focus today. So uh, Marcia, uh, Marika, you have. Uh, you yeah, have I, I have a general question about uh, how much Socrates is in Plato's, because Plato's always Socrates didn't write anything, and um, Plato's wrote all most of his writing is dialogues with uh, Socrates. So, how much of the ideas of Socrates are in Plato's writing? I mean. Do we know for sure that what he's saying that Socrates said uh, is what he Socrates said, or is always the ideas of Plato and he used Socrates as the you know like front for his ideas? Yeah, okay, that's why I uh, usually the scholars separate as early dialogue, middle dialogue, and the later dialogue. So uh Every dialogue, they have a person called Socrates who is speaking, okay? So only the last dialogue, laws, okay? There's no Socrates voice, only a person called Athenian stranger, okay? So that's the only dialogue has no Socrates voice. So you will, I will say every single dialogue, they have the Socrates, but is that real Socrates? Okay, and I believe it's not. Uh, so that's why the scholar was separate for the early dialogue, which probably Plato heard from Socrates. So we can consider that's Socrates' philosophy. In the middle dialogue, which is symposium, features, and fiddles, Parmenides, Republic, we are going to talk about Republic today. Here, Socrates talked a lot, okay? Not just questioning the people. Socrates talked a lot, like a Republic, Socrates talked for, uh, Republic had 10 books, and I would say 90% is Socrates' monologue. So we would believe this one is Plato's philosophy. And to the end, the later dialogue, Socrates is still there, but Socrates only show up to ask two questions, then disappear. Okay, so Socrates only speak a few lines. And usually they have other people speak. And to the last one, laws, only uh, Athenians change, speak a lot. So uh, Socrates kind of like dis disappear. So for sure, okay, the later dialogue is totally uh, Plato's philosophy. So I hope I answer your question, Marshall. 
Okay, Marika. Yes, thank you. But my, my also my my question was uh, that I'm sure that there was a lot of philosophers that they follow uh, Socrates, and if they disagree with what Plato was saying, that Socrates was saying, uh, was there any records that anybody was? Well, was there any discussion or? We take yeah, we will for... discuss this one, and of course, nobody that precede this one, and that's what I want to ask everyone to think about, right? Not everybody agree with Plato or Socrates, like Aristotle. We are going to deal next week. There's a, a few strong point Aristotle disagree with his teacher. All right. So uh, next week we will talk about Aristotle and the. Uh, uh, Socrates, a uh, Plato student, and basically many points, uh, you will see uh, a lot of difference between uh, Aristotle and Plato. So before I go to uh, Republic, I would like to ask a few questions, okay? And we don't need to have answer. We can start to think about these questions. So first, Okay, uh, I think that's last week's question, right? Whitehead, famous quote is general uh, characterization of the European philosophical tradition is that it consists of a series of footnotes of Plato. He considered Plato's influence is for the entire European philosophy. Okay, so what we are doing is just a footnote of uh, Plato. But Whitehead student, Bertrand Russell, he treats a senior philosopher. I think he's especially in uh, Plato. He considers us like a contemporary English or America advocate for totalitarians. Okay, that's in his uh, history of Western philosophy. Uh, basic, he's talking about Plato's Republic. That's what we are going to read today. And another person, Karl Popper, okay, I think in this week, read it in his Open Society and its enemy. He also look, consider Plato's uh, political writing is kind of commitment to Spartan-like re, re, regimentation of social life. Okay, so we will look at this one. So the question we would like to ask is, is Platonic state just or unjust? So can we, is that possible, put the Plato's uh, utopia or so-called republic in practice? Or another way to look at is the question is, is republic, this dialogue is about a state or just about a soul? That's a big, that's a big question people are asking. When Plato talk about a state, he, does he really mean it's a state or he just mean a soul? That's one way to look at. And another way to look at is even Plato talk about a soul. He probably talk about a state because Plato is a political figure. So doesn't matter how he talk, he is thinking about a state. So I think that's the question uh, people has been discussing. And today I, my purpose is I try my best to uh, show what the Republic is. And then you probably can tell me, you know, it's uh, Plato is talking about a soul or talking about a state. So before I really start, uh, any question or any concern about the Republic? Let's focus on the Republic. Anybody has uh, any reading about Republic or uh, uh, take any lecture or any anything? No? No second time, no third time. Okay, so I will continue. So Republic is very long. Okay, so I try to uh, put uh, one or two slides for each book. So total has 10 book. Okay, so it's, it's a lot, just have to say it's a lot. And then I do my best to summarize. And then if you read Plato's, you know, uh, it's not easy. It's, it's very long. 
So when I summarize, and I probably will miss something, and because I only can summarize what I think is important. And then uh, you may not think that's important, and you may have something is, you think is more important. So you can interrupt if you say, hey, uh, I, don't th I think you miss this part, or if you read something. So that, that's the part I'd like to know. So start from book one, like a tradition, right? Uh, Socrates start to ask a question, okay? I think this one is writing not as a form of dialogue. It's right as a first person, I, okay? The person say, I, and uh, I met, uh, what's his name? Uh, Groken, Groken, okay, who is Plato's brother and uh, uh, Adamant Adamantus, okay? He's another brother. So that I is Socrates. So this is Socrates is monologue. He said, I went someone, I see Groken and I see something, no Plato here, just Socrates, first person. So he just, uh, so people sit down, okay? Uh, and start to discuss things. And Socrates, first topic he's asking, what is justice, okay? So Cephalus, the first answer, he talked about, uh, Justice is legal obligation. Being honest, that's the justice. Then just like uh, usual, as usual, Socrates start to challenge and he said, well, a madman may legally own a weapon, right? So the, the, is that called justice? I think today we are in America, we all know how bad when a madman or, or mental disease, uh, mental ill person own an, a weapon. So, Polomarchus, okay, give another answer. He said, harm enemies and help friends. That's justice. Then Socrates start to challenge. He said, friends are not necessarily virtuous and the enemies may be virtuous. Okay, that's his challenge. Then here comes another person, uh, Thrasymachus. Okay, he is a sophist. So he said, justice is the advantage of the stronger. So that means you know, if you are stronger, you said you have to say, and the, what you say is the power. So that's his idea. Then Socrates start to challenge this uh, statement. He said, a just person is wise, not powerful. Okay? He's talking about person. Okay? A justice is about the rule, not the ruler. So he used a good example. He says, when we say good medicine, right? Medical, we talk about medical treatment. We are not talking about the doctor. We are talking about the patient. Does the patient really benefit? Okay, not the doctor get benefit. So justice is not about the rule, it's about the rule. Number three, justice is the virtue of soul. Okay, so here you will see when Socrates talk about, or Plato talk about justice. He's not only talk about the state, he also talking about the soul. Okay, that's the finish of book one. Okay, I just try to make it simple. So then we can move to book two. Glocken, okay, uh, Plato's blood, younger blood. He start to challenge Socrates' answer. He talked, Socrates, uh, he talked about justice is to avoid the punishment and the gain reward, okay? Reward and the punishment, that's justice. So he uh, talked about a fable, a story, a reign of uh, Jaiji, Jaijis, right? I think it's Jaijis, reign of Jaijis. Uh, if you see the Lord of Rin, they talk about this. So uh, Crocan talk about the story, okay, say, uh, I think that's a very good uh, thought uh, experiment. Okay. He talked about a shepherd that discovered a ring which make the uh, wearer invisible. So he used this power and then to uh, increase a per, uh, uh, personal uh, uh, advantage. So he seduced the queen of the kingdom and killed the king and become the ruler. So Glocken concluded that even a moral person will eventually become immoral as long as he believes he cannot be punished for his action. 
So basic is the idea. I think that's a good thought, right? If you think about, it, will you still be moral if you have this kind of ring? Okay. So that's a uh, Crocus challenge to Socrates. So Socrates answer. He said, justice is virtue and the virtue has its own reward. In other way, being justice, being a just person, it already has a reward. You don't need the reward from outside. Okay, that's a Socrates statement. Then Socrates talk about the history of the human uh, development. So he talk about four stage. And the first stage, it's a necessity. So people just like have a food, have a shelter, and they live the life, which the girl can call the city of pigs. So it just live like a pig. So uh, that's the first stage. Then people start to gain wealth. Then you have a luxury uh, uh, city. Okay, so people start to hold more stuff and get uh, more and more belongings. And that's why start to have war because people are fighting for the resources. Then we will need the guardians, right? Cannot, everybody cannot be just like pig. We need the guardians. Okay, so needed. So we need, I think he's talking about the situation uh, in the uh, essence at that moment. So number four, the future development, he called the uh, cardipolis. That means good city state. So that's the ideal situation. They will have political justice and individual justice. So that's the utopia. So in the end of book two, uh, Plato set up for the ideal state, which is Republic, Calipodes, and not only the state is justice of an individual, every individual also just. I think that's he tried to set up on the book two. So, Question and the comment for book two. So then that's move, move to book three. Okay. So here, uh, Plato or Socrates start to talk about education. Since we are setting up the ideal state, Calipolis, then we have to talk about education. And this, I think that when the, uh, another writing in another dialogue, laws, uh, Plato has much more detail about education. But here is the first time Plato is talking about education. So he talked about education, uh, four things. First, physical training. Okay, uh, the purpose of physical training is for the warfare because war, okay, always in his mind. Second, musical training, okay, because that's the harmony, so you can avoid the savage. Okay, so, the, and the medical training, medical training for everyone because you want to keep your body health. So remember, the medical training is for the body, music training is for your soul, put this way, and then. Love, you should encourage love. Use love or arrows. It's the one to bridge your, the physical world and the intelligible world. So that's Plato's training idea. Then he started to talk about a myth of metals. And this one we can call it a, a lie, a, low, a noble lie, because uh, that's the, a lot of criti receive a lot of criticism here. Plato, or Socrates, the ideal state has three classes. It's not all men equal, okay? So they have the ruler, or you want to call guardians. They have the auxiliaries, uh, which you want to call um, soldier, okay, or warrior. And they have the producers. So they have the three kinds of people because they want to set up three classes of people. So, during that time, or probably still the same, uh, the Western tradition, when we talk about cardinal virtues, four cardinal virtues, we talk about justice, wisdom, courage, and uh, temperance. So these four cardinal virtues 
were built in the three different class. In the, for the entire society, we want to achieve the justice, okay? So that's the highest goal. For the ruler, guardians, what uh, virtue they need, require most is wisdom. Okay? For the soldiers or auxiliaries, okay, they require the, 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 the virtue requirement is courage. And the, for the producer is temperance so they can control themselves or not go over. And to set up this kind of society, Socrates or Plato has to tell lies, or so-called noble lies. They call it the myth of metal. They talk about the soul was built uh, when the God made the people and they had to they make a soul first, and then make the body. And then they have the three kinds of material, iron, silver, and gold. Some people are made of the soul are made of iron, some people so are made of silver, some people so are made of gold. Then you got the three different kinds of people. And that's the people are different. And that's why you want to build in the three different uh, uh, class of people. Okay. Uh, Maria, please. Yes, I wondered if this education was to was applied to women as well as men. Yes, applied to women. I'm very sure. <laughs> you talk about this. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, and we will talk about this. And of course, we know, you know, uh, Plato or Socrates, they don't respect the woman. But in this education, you know, uh, they treat the woman equally. Okay, uh, thank you for this question. Yeah. Okay, so we finished book three. Okay. And let's go to book four. Okay. Basics, book four, it's kind of repeat. Uh, if you were here last week, we talked about features, which is sword, tripartite sword. Okay, so he repeats this story. Okay, and he recalled this story about soul. In Socrates or Plato's soul is a three part, okay. Uh, his, his allegory or story is, it's a chariot, charioteer controlling two horses. One is uh, so-called the noble horses, the spiritual horse. And the, no, another one is, uh, Appetitive, appetitive, uh, appetitive soul, uh, uh, soul, which is ignoble. So you have to use your rationality to control this horse. Okay. So this one is a famous later on become uh, uh, Freud, uh, the uh, it, uh, super ego and the ego, this kind of concept. So that's Plato's uh, tri uh, tripartite uh, soul idea with a charity with two horses. So right now it's going to build the justice. It also means the health, the health of the soul. So you can see before we talk about a state, which is justice and with the three, uh, uh, three uh, class of people, if you look at uh, three class of people and the gold is made of the ruler, uh, the silver is for the Oxidaries and iron as for producer. And here, the Plato go back to your soul, right? So the, the soul for the individual soul and the state, which also need to be just. So your rational part of soul, you need the wisdom. So you last for truth and just like a guardian, right? And then your spiritual soul is last for honor, just like auxiliary. So you need courage. And your appetitive soul, it lasts for sex and the food and anything, the basic need. So if they can become a producer and the, the virtue you need is temperance to control this. So that's book three and the book four. Uh, Plato start to bring the state 
and the soul together. A just state is a just person, uh, also means a healthy soul. That's the idea. So then we finish book four. Okay, any question or comment? Otherwise, I will move to book five and the Maria, please. Yes, I find it interesting that um, spirituality is linked to the lust for honor. Yeah. Just because that's not how I would think of, <laughs> I don't think of that spiritual quality at all. Um, I think that uh, that's, um, well, ambition is often rather earthbound. <laughs> Uh, I think the, I, uh, well, I, I don't have a clear answer to you. Be honest, uh, when those, the, these four virtues, justice, wisdom, and courage, and the temperance, uh, we shall read another later uh, uh, dialogue. Uh, Philippus, they talk a lot. A lot. It's, it's, <laughs> it's not what we think of uh, just, uh, uh, as a courage, the courage is a mental state. Let me give a quick example. Uh, uh, he, when we talk about courage, he probably talk about something like, for example, you are thinking about eating some unhealthy food and then you try not to eat it because, because it's not healthy. He called this courage. You may see that's a temperance, but he called this kind of thing temperance, uh, the courage. So I, I'm not trying to explain in the detail, but I just let you know, you know, uh, uh, you are thinking it's very reasonable because it's a lot of things. It's not what we think today. Yeah. And mm -hmm. another thing, the purpose he doing here is uh, Plato tried to uh, link the just state and the just soul and the healthy soul all together. So that, that's his purpose. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. And then- Sounds very interesting. Okay, thank you. So uh, I think that you can read the uh, Plato dialogue interest. You, know, you will find it's interest, you know, if you, you be a little bit open-minded. So let's go to the book five, uh, which is most famous talking about the philosopher kings. Okay, so since we talk about uh, just state and the just soul, okay. Then we have and the all kinds of virtues, they all lie up together. Okay, let's assume you, know, you are convinced. So the leader, right, the guardian, he called philosopher kings. Okay, so he never been very clear Plato never been clear on uh, philosopher kings is how many or, uh, but he talked about their life. Okay, I, we will assume it's guardian, the highest level, uh, the soul made of gold. So he talked about, okay, I just answer uh, the uh, question from, uh, is Marika or Mary about the woman? Okay, so women and men will be trained together. Okay. But the, the, the difficult part here, the spouse and children are separate. Okay? So uh, they live a uh, communal life. So sexual intercourse are allowed only in a certain period of time of the year. Okay? So Interesting. It's, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's just like animal, we put it this way. And, uh, and even oh. the tough part, uh, more uh, 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 part I didn't include here is he talked about if the children were born out of season will be killed, okay? So uh, the reason they believe a certain season is a good time to produce a good offspring. Okay. That's Plato's idea. Okay. Uh, I have and, a question. I'm sorry. Uh, Amy, please. <laughs> Children of guardians must join wars for testing? What does that mean? Oh, okay, yes, yes. I will go have more detail, okay? So they test whether or not they are courage. They have enough courage. They are suitable for fighting. Okay, because I, I got okay. scared. It was like another, you know, 
Oh like yeah, this. sorry. I didn't. I just write quickly. I, I didn't make yeah. it. Thank you for asking. Thank you for it. Yeah. Yeah, because you know the Hitler with the twins. Remember? <laughs> yeah. So basically, they have to join the war. Okay. So they are, so basically they uh, Plato want to get rid of the private property and the fake concept of family. So that's the part Aristotle is totally disagree when Aristotle write his politics. Okay. He said against uh, 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 Republic because uh, just opposite to what Plato is talking about. Aristotle is talking about the ideal state, Kalipodis should use family as a foundation. So you have a family, community, and the grow up. That's Aristotle's idea. But Plato is talking about no wife, no husband, no and the parents, no kids. And he has he go very detailed, okay, and I include him here, because he had to avoid incest, right? Because since yes. you don't know who is your father, your mother, and you don't know who is your brother, or your sister, so you have a vote. So I think he has a complex way to avoid okay, the incest. I think he, it's, it's got to very complex. Right? Okay, so basics, he's talking about the process of select uh, philosopher kid. So basics, you will select uh, the babies with the proper, proper aptitude for training. Okay, so you select the ideal, healthy, smart babies. Okay, you know, uh, as you know, during that time, it's common for in uh, Greek they just throw away the unhealthy baby. That's a common practice. They just get rid of unhealthy baby. They only keep the healthy baby. But here, uh, Plato want to do is further select good potential babies for training. Okay, so they all live in the communal life. So they don't know who is your father, your mother. So they will join the uh, philosopher kid training program. Okay. They will have more detail on the philosopher kid training program. So here's the book five. We talked about the uh, uh, philosopher kid, the concept of philosophy coming here. Question, comment? Okay, so- uh, I have one. Amy. I just want to know if, I have, all right. For instance, Jean Paul Sauté. Okay. Is any of his beliefs Plato or no? You mean Sartre, the, the French, uh, Jean Paul Sartre, right? I think he did develop his uh, philosophy from Plato's form, idea, and form. And I don't see, I, I, I don't see he uh, talk about. Plato's uh, Republic. Okay, that, that's, that's, that's my answer. Okay. Unless he read uh, Plato's Republic as talking about soul, not talking about uh, the politics. So book six, okay, that's a famous song, uh, oh, sorry, that's misspelled, S-U-N, some metaphor, we talk about song. Okay. So basically song is the source of the light. So we compare sun and the good, right? The good is the source of intelligibility. So sun is responsible for giving us sight and the good is giving us the capability of knowledge. So that's a one-to-one -one comparison. And the sun is responsible for the existence of everything, flower, animal, because you need the sun to grow and grow food and the good is responsible for the existence of form, idea and form. So for example, Plato talking about uh, everything has its idea or form and the good, the good itself is the source. So that's his comparison. In the sensible world, we have a sun, so we can see everything, everything grow here. In the intelligible world, that the, the good, so when we talk about good, he's not talking about a good thing, a good behavior, a good person, he talked about the good itself. So the good itself is the source of form or idea. Okay. So, and everything, so that's the knowledgeable work. So that's he, uh, Plato is talking about the intelligent. Okay. How do we know epistemology? So here get the more complex, right? He draws so-called the line metaphor. He draws the line, okay, so, 
because the sound is from uh, A, B, C, D, E. Okay, so on the first part, that's our sensible world and which have a conjecture and belief, that's this distance. And on our intelligible world, we have understanding and reasoning, okay, these two parts. So depending on what kind of people you are, the distance of A, B, B, C, C, D, D, E, they can change. So your opinion depends on the, the number, okay, the belief, divided conjecture, okay, the more you believe, the stronger opinion. And the, your knowledge is depends on the thought, which is written, and your understanding. Okay. So that's his uh, lie metaphor. And the reason he said that this is going to his famous uh, the uh, allegory of cave. So I think here we finish book six, we're almost you know fifty percent done for the uh, Plato's Republic. So. Here, I showed last week, and that's the same thing. I think this picture is pretty good. He tell a story, another story, allegory of cave. Okay, so he said, most of people, what we see daily life, we see just opinion, okay, just particular. We kind of like people being chained in a cave. And what we see just the shadow okay, from the outside. Okay, so we see this one, and then we see and horse, people, birds, everything. And the, we see that, we think that that's the real world. Until one person get off the shackles, he run out, he see the fire, he see the, uh, the horse, and this one, he said, oh, that's not the real thing. What we have seen every day, it's just a shadow. That's the real thing. But Prado is telling us, the situation is even more than this, because what you see, even you escape from this one, you still in the cave. That's our empirical world. So this person running out to outside, okay, he see the real world. He see the sun and he see the real horse, he see the real tree. Then he start to know, wow, that's the real world. Then he come back to tell people, but it's very hard for people to believe. So this uh, allegory of cave basically is telling us that's very important for Plato's epistemology. He talk about the empirical world, the whole world is here. Our daily life, everybody just being chained to see the uh, shadows. And he received the opinions, but he thinks the opinion is true. Only the smart person get out of the chain and see the real world. He see, oh, that's, you see, oh, he can see that's real. Just like a scientist, educated person, you know, they see the truth, okay, the true knowledge. But Plato just tell us, no, 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 that's not true. That's just empirical. You see a dog, you see a cat, you see a tree, you see a river, you see a lot of people. That's just empirical world. They have the form, the ideal form. You have to get out of this and see the real world, which is the true, the true truth. So that's Plato's uh, allegory of uh, K. Okay. So that's on um, book six, okay. So before we move on, so I will pause for question or comment. Power, please. Yeah, the interesting thing is that I know it's only an analogy, but yeah. um, even that is kind of a hierarchical uh, yes. analysis because to understand the cave, I mean, the cave is, is a world in itself as well. Yeah. And if you only spend your time out in the sun, you wouldn't understand the world of the cave. So, <clears throat> so in other words, it's um, the understanding of the world is actually understanding of particular worlds. So the people that... Uh, live in the world of opinion, understand that world in a way that a philosopher doesn't as well. That's yeah. <laughs> yeah, thank you for uh, sharing. Yeah. Uh, Claire, please. Yes, I like to know. Um, 
how would somebody know if they see the real thing or shadow or um, something that caused shadow? And who can prove to them? Um, yeah, that's a tough question. Anybody have an answer? That's, that's, that's why we need to join uh, uh, Plato's uh, philosopher kin training. Okay. So we will talk about this one in uh, two books later. He has a philosopher, he has a training program. All right. Today you know uh, uh, to grow you up on that. And I, I believe 80%, 90% may see it's uh, unreason, not reasonable, impractical, but that's Plato's idea. <laughs> Okay, so let's move to the book seven. Okay, so, okay, that's the one. Okay, so uh, just to answer Claire's question. Okay. So philosopher Kim, training program. Okay. So first, okay, so uh, before you do that, not everybody is able to escape. Okay, so most of people just chant uh, together, just chant and see the particular world and then receive the opinion. Okay, so uh, remember if we in the manuals, Plato talking about the knowledge, the innate knowledge, only certain kind of people. All right, so depend on your soul. So start from the selecting the right babies. Okay, so the first 20 years training is focused on uh, mathematics, geometry. Okay, so that's the important training. So in the 20 years, they will choose the good student, good performer. Then they will start for another 10 years philosophical training. So you have the learning all kinds of knowledge. Then for another five years, okay, uh, they were still to select the good one, the good potential dialecticians, di dialecticians okay? So they will do the dialectic training. So basic training on reasoning, on thought. Remember, it's not on sensation, so it's on the thought. Okay, that just answer the question. Okay, how do you know? you are in the real world or you are in the empirical world. That's the training, dialectic training. Training on thought, you have to avoid the sensation. You focus on your thought, logic. That's, that's what we have to do. For five, when the baby, or not baby anymore, when the people, the candidate reaches 35 years old, that's the, just answer the question. They join wars, they have to join the world and the politics to get more experience. And of course, you know, the person are not courage, you know, or unlucky or got killed, you know, whatever. So basically to the 50 years old, they will start to choose the steadfast, loyal, and the wise people become the philosophy, philosopher kids. And these philosopher kids will rule, lead the state. And they also responsible for educating the next generation from the class of uh, guardian and uh, uh, auxiliaries. So basically that's very uh, hierarchical society, only the guardian or auxiliary devil okay, can do. And after you die, you'll be worshiped as demigods. So that's his training program. And the book eight, Okay, here uh, Plato start to talk about more politics. Okay, so he talked about why we need this kind of state, um, Kalipolis. Okay, he talked about the democracy, the starting point. Democracy, uh, I think the word means uh, ruled by the nobles. Okay, so, and at that time, nobles probably means virtuous. So the virtuous people, the noble person, okay, rule the state. And then he said that because sometimes ruled by wrong people, not philosopher kin, they will become oligarchy. Okay, so you become ruled by the rich. And then the, 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 the state just spread, right? Become rich people, okay. the city of the rich and the city, uh, city of poor. And then oligarchy will kind of decline to democracy, all right, because Okay, then the poor, because the poor will start to have a revolution, and democracy will turn to tyranny. That's what we try to avoid. Okay, 
So I think that when we read uh, Aristotle, we will see similar the analysis, but you know, a little bit different way. So we'll move to book nine. We almost finished uh, the uh, Republic. Book nine. So going back to individual, Plato or Socrates here to talk about. So the uh, democratic uh, men, they are looking for honor, but when they decline to the oligarchic men, they become thriftiness, okay? Thriftiness. And they become democratic men. They start to desire, have the unnecessary desire. And they will decline to tyrannical men, which is law lawlessness. So here, he make a very interesting concept. He talk about become a tyrant. Actually, the tyrant himself suffer the most, okay? Tyrant is not the person who enjoy. Okay, because philosopher kid, they enjoy their, they have the real happiness. He talking about the just life is present, itself is present, like philosopher kid is happy. And the tyrant suffer, that's what he's talking about. He even have a calculation. He said a just man is 729 times happier than a tyrant. So please don't ask me uh, why have a 729? I see some paper discussing this and uh, it's difficult and we don't know. And I'm sure in the original text, Socrates didn't explain how. He just say this one and Grogan say, wow, that's a wonderful number. Okay. And Interesting. <laughs> Socrates and, and Plato really like numbers. And in those, he even talk about the ideal state. She'll have a 5,040 citizens for each state. But here, that, that one he explained why 5,040. Because 5,040 can be divided by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So you can group in any way you want. So 5,040 people are the right size. That's his explanation. But here, 729, only thing I can think about is three, the power of six. Okay, so uh, why this way? I don't know. Okay. So basically, he want to do is want to tell everyone, I don't know if you are convinced or not. Okay, I hope you are. But the tyranny himself suffered. Okay, the philosopher king is happier. Okay, so that's what he wants to say. So for the book nine. Oh, so two, two, two had something to do with him, right? Maybe. 222, two, two, the numbers. 222, two, two. I don't see the two, number 222. Two, two. Okay, because that's angels. Oh, that's not, they, they don't talk about angel. I think you missed. Oh, okay, uh, got uh, it. Uh, 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 Thomas Aquinas, that's angel knowledge. Okay. Oh, he's that's against both, they love it. <laughs> okay, Jason, so. Jason, I have a quick question on the, on, could you put the nine card up again? Uh, uh, the nine card? No. Oh, wait, this one. Okay. Yeah. I mean, as you've been doing this, I'm really, I've been trying to hold that dual image of both the state and the individual, right? Yeah. And um, so my question is like oligarchic man thriftiness, would that translate to like um, uncharity, non charitable? I think here he's not talking about charity. He talk about the okay. He's talking about the democratic man because who rule uh, right. the noble, the, the oligarchic man though. But become the rich people rule the poor people, right? Oh, okay. Right, but I think of oligarchic as um, um, like almost hoarding. Um, which requires lack of charity. Just to just to go down this. So democratic man, <clears throat> unnecessary desires, they start to model um, the oligarchy that they've overthrown. So they have, they become immodest in their desires. Yeah, then, I think you are right, you know. So that's what I'm saying. I'm seeing both the soul and the state in those terms, right? Yes, yes, okay. okay. But here he, he more, I think during that time uh, uh, on the uh, African side, uh, uh, there's uh, some state basic, their system is oligarchy. Okay, so the rich people will rule. Okay, uh, so, uh, so there's no, I think in uh, 
uh, Aristotle have a more detail uh, talking about this kind of uh, person. And personally, I don't see this one so convincing, but Aristotle's uh, politics are much more convincing. Uh, right. I modify this one, yeah. But I'm seeing parallels, I think. I mean, thriftiness threw me off because, I mean, thrifty is someone I think of as really sensible with um, goods and, and funds. But oh, I get you. It's another way to talk about, right? The whole, that? yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. I think you, 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 you are right. Probably we should, I should use a different word. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Rather than thriftiness, that was throwing me off a bit. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for, for this. Yeah. Because that's probably not the right word to choose. Probably we should call it a holder or something like this. Yeah. Good. Uh, yeah. Uh, some somebody who wants all the goods. Yeah. Um, wants all the goods. Yeah. That's right. right. Yeah. That, okay. okay. I was just wondering if I was misunderstanding. Thank no, you. No, 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 you don't. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. And uh, thank you for uh, uh, reminding me because when we use language, we only one side. So we only look at as visual me. Okay. Only see one side. So uh, that will, uh, your response and tell me how do you think will help me. Yeah. Uh, correct. Okay. Yeah. Thank, thank you. you. Anyway. Okay. So we almost finished. I think it's an amazing job because. Uh, uh, because it's 10 books, it's a lot, okay? So, uh, book 10, okay, this one is interesting part, okay? He, uh, he talked about, uh, he, and he talked about tyrant, then right now he talked about poetry, okay? So he is, Plato is a good poet writer, but he is against poetry tradition, Greek poetry tradition. So. He said, uh, poets pretend no, they know all things, but they don't. Poetry imitates the worst part of the soul, the appetitive soul and not the rational soul. So only direction, dialogue are the good because they are talking about the rational part. And I poetry talk about uh, appetitive uh, soul. Okay, so that's not good. And he said, poetry deceive us Okay, into sympathizing with those who grieve excessively, thus inappropriately, and laugh at the base thing. So, basic idea, no poetry, okay. And then he, I think his idea, sometimes it's difficult to understand, but his idea is, let's think about this idea. The logic is this. Uh, when we see a dog, a person, basically that's a copy, from the idea or form. So the real world is already, remember the, the, the cave, the world that we see is already a copy from the form or idea. And the poetry or drama is a copy from the real world. So it's a double copy. So his question is, why don't you see the, instead of going up to see the idea and the form, you going down to make another copy, okay, from the low end. So that's not good. That's why he is against poetry. And unlike Aristotle, Aristotle write a book called Poetic. Basically, we can consider as his argue against uh, Plato's idea. So Plato, this dialogue finish with another myth of earth. Okay, so talk about earth was a man who died during the battle and he was led to a place where there were judge and decide the soul. Blah, blah, blah. So he talked about afterlife because Earl was, body was undecomposed for 10 days and he didn't drink the water from the river days. River days is the water you drink and you forget everything before you go to your next life. So two days later, Earl come back and tell the story of afterlife. So we talk about a murder, uh, tyrant, they go to the underworld forever, good soul, you know, go to the nice place and the soul can be, can choose, you know, what's your next life. And before you drink the water from the day, the water is, and some people drink a lot, some people only drink a little bit, that explain why some people kind of remember their previous life and some people are totally unknown about this. And the, uh, usually people will choose uh, the experience, the lesson you learn from your previous life 
and then you will make a choice what kind of life you want to go. And some people decide to become an animal. Some animal become to decide to become a people. And he told the story, uh, a tyrant, a person wanted to be become a dictator. And then turned out that he ate his own son and they suffered. So, we, blah, blah, blah. so that's the end with a myth of soul that he talked about. So basics, that's the story is of Plato's uh, 10 books, uh, Republic. So big thousand dollar, million dollar question is, what is Plato talking about? Is he talking about a soul or talking about a state? So I will pause for uh, one minute and five minutes, 10 minutes. If you want to uh, idea, you want to share on how do you think? Uh, and what is Plato talking about? Soul, I think soul, no? It no, is. soul is. Okay, that's fine. I think soul is more poetic. Okay. <laughs> I can see the parallels and it occurs to me as we're talking about this, that the two are cycles of each other, right? Without soulful people or without um, the, pe the, you know, the, the virtues he was describing, you can't have a virtuous state and without a virtuous state, you can't have virtuous people. Thank so you. They're, they're part of a cycle is, am I, Totally off base with that? No, 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 no. Actually, it's a totally, you know, it's a it's an open question. You know, I don't see anyone have. A, uh, you see, at the beginning, I post people have a two different kind of opinion, right? Some people think that Plato's uh, uh, philosophy uh, usually mean uh, Republic is great, okay? Because usually, this kind of people think about it's a soul. Okay. Even he talk about state. Think about the state. They have the guardian. They have the soldier. They have the producer. That's our people. That's not state. Okay. The training program. Okay. Uh, sounds like you know you have to kill the bad baby. No, no, no. That's not the real baby. They talk about the bad idea. You should get rid of that. That's one way to think about that. Okay. That's, yeah, I don't see it as an mm -hmm. as an either or. I'm I'm mm -hmm. able to hold on to it as a both and. Yeah, I think so. That will be a fair statement. And the personal experience, at the beginning, I really hate uh, Republic. I think Republic is terrible, okay? And uh, totalitarian. But after someone explained to me, I think oh, that if I look at it as a soul, I can understand. But later on, when I read uh, later dialogue talking about uh, the laws and the talk about uh, Tiberius. Uh, I start to not believe Plato is talking about soul. I believe Plato is talking about state, okay? And which I dislike again, but I can look at it in a different way. So the, uh, I think I see it more, I think I see it as more symbiotic or, or not either or, yeah. Uh, but both in more as uh, at this age than I did when I was first introduced to all this. <laughs> if, if I think there's a difference between being a young person and reading this and being a, shall we say, a senior citizen reading this. Um, I can see a, a larger playing field now than I saw as a, a young person. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I think that I, I think that this. Personally, I think the symposium and the Republic is worth to read again and again. Of course, reading uh, from the world to world is very difficult, take a long time, but you can read the summary, okay, and then, then you will have a different uh, opinion every time. That, that's my experience, so. Uh, okay, thank you. Thank you, thank you, everyone. And, I, I'm just looking up, yeah. Okay, so hold on, we have a few- oh, I just wanted up. to tell you, uh, Amy, can you hold? Okay. Uh, okay, let's have a uh, V, yeah. and Howard, and the Fred. V, please. Thank you so much. I see it slightly more as concerned with the state. I'd say it's, in my opinion, it's about 60% state and then the rest of <laughs> soul. And the reason I say that is because he's talking more about the organization of people in general as opposed to the individual people. 
However, I want to include the soul as well because I see a state uh, metaphorically like a human body. We can't take the cells, the individual cells away from our body. Otherwise, we wouldn't have a body at all. Mm -hmm. So without keeping in mind that the state is encompassed and includes the individual soul, even if it's in this point, like the planet, we have seven, about 7 billion people, a little bit more than that at this point. So I, I think, you know, it's almost 50-50, but slightly more state because he doesn't talk much about the individuality perspective. Thank yeah, you so thank much. You. Yeah, thank you. And then uh, don't forget that after he write this one, uh, Plato went to, uh, uh, to really to, to, to set up a, a utopia, right, for the uh, uh, King Dionysus the second, okay. So he just really tried to work on that. And so it's hard for me to believe uh, he's only talking about soul, not really uh, political. And then in his latest dialogue, uh, The Laws, he is not talking about philosophy King anymore. He talking about the law. Okay, so it's, that's why I kind of think about Plato is political. So, but again, you know, I could, I may change it later, you know, but anyway, uh, right. how this? Yeah, I, I tend to agree with V that uh, the, the emphasis is on the state, um, but definitely they're mutually uh, interdependent. You can't have one without the other really, um, because the individual is influenced by the state and the state is composed of the individuals. Um, but the real, the key is that he doesn't really believe in freedom. He believes in, um, it, it, that he's found the way that humans actually function best. And that's the way um, that therefore the state should be designed. And the state therefore uh, effectively creates the individuals that are gonna be function the best and be happiest. Uh, because he doesn't believe there's any other way to do it. Um, and I also think that uh, his, his, his um, assessment of the different forms of rule, um, you can actually see that playing out uh, currently. Um, you know, like we in the West, um, we have a, a tension between democracy and oligarchy, uh, although a lot of people don't even believe that. A lot of people believe we're just democratic. But it's fairly clear, especially in the last 30 years, that we've moved to an oligarchy based on, on wealth and property. And I think he probably experienced a similar thing uh, so long ago. So it tends to support, um, <clears throat> uh, you know, it's evidence to support his, his argument to say that, um, you know, you get... Uh, you know, think, things have good features, all forms of government have appealing features, but in the end, they have a tendency to, uh, to have bad outcomes. Um, so, for example, in other words, democracy, people hold that as the highest ideal. Um, whereas, you know, I mean, I don't want to offend anyone, but we've got a, a, a problem at the moment in terms of... Um, people won't respect science on the one hand and right. believe in the, in the democracy of anyone having an opinion and being able to, without expert uh, participation, can just fling about any argument and therefore bring down scientific consensus. On the other hand, we do have problems with sci scientific consensus isn't um, infallible and that becomes evident to the, the people in the, in the democracy. So you do have that tension. And you can look at look at where we are now in either way to see the, those problems, which he actually observed in his own society. Um, just one other thing, if I may, um, his idea about um, eugenics. Um, I'm in Australia, uh, but I do listen to a lot of American media and uh, recently heard something uh, which maybe a lot of Amer you guys in, in the USA know about the forced sterilization program, um, which was uh, in place from the 1920s right up to the 1970s at various uh, stages, um, which resulted in, in 
hundreds of thousands of uh, people being sterilised because they were judged to be unfit. Um, and that was across the USA in most states. And it was, it was originally uh, supported by a lot of scientists. Um, so that's something to, to consider as well. Yeah, uh, definitely. If you, I think the Howard also in uh, the Western philosophy reading group. <laughs> yeah, Bertrand Russell really don't have a good word about Plato's. So, uh, but we have to remember, you know, uh, first uh, Plato, Plato, he he lived between he lived between the he see the thirty tyranny uh, tyranny rule, right? And then he see the recovery of the democracy. And this democracy killed his teacher. So he must think a lot on this kind of situation. Is tyranny, he doesn't want it. Democracy, good or not good, you know, even you and the, the, this system kill his teacher, okay? And he has to run away for 12 years because he is in danger. So a lot of things he's thinking. So of course we, whether or not he has a bad influence, Okay, we can talk about one thing. Another thing is we can understand his mental state during that situation. And I believe, personally, I believe the political issue is always in his mind. And just one other thing. The um, Sorry, just, just a quick one. Uh, our democracy is a, being a capitalist consumerist democracy has actually led to a lot of the excesses that he was warning about. So people are actually consuming far too much. Mm -hmm. which we know that now. Though there's a general consensus we're consuming far too much for the sake of the planet, let alone our own mental and emotional health and our intellectual health for that matter too. So you can see that play out as well. Yep, thank you. Uh, Fred, please. Yeah, my remark gets back to the question raised about solar state. And I think <laughs> B is... Uh, uh, <clears throat> B is right that uh, it's it's more state than soul. I would probably put it more like 80% state, 20% soul, but that's a real important 20% because one of the distinctions is that that uh, the ideal state or Calipolis that, uh, that Plato presents is recognized by, uh, by Plato as ideal and probably not realizable uh, in, in our, our life. However, he says that it serves as a good model for building a polis within yourself. And so in that sense, it's mostly about the state, almost entirely about the state. However, he's, he's, he says, but we probably can't do this in society. However, whether we can or not, this is, this is something that you can build within yourself and you can do that. Yeah, thank you, Fred. I, I agree with you. And then when I, I really like, you know, uh, the, uh, his last dialogue, uh, the laws, okay? Because this one, that one is more, of course, the terrible idea is still there. Okay, you have to forbid something, you know, the terrible idea is still, but he become more practical. He talking about set up a new state and in critics, and then uh, that's the 12 books, much, much longer than this. And it's, I think that's interesting, you know, he, he become more practical in his later age, you know, and he's not talking about philosophy anymore. So uh, Amy, I, do you, uh, you still have a comment? You know what, I'm just looking up all this information that he felt uh, with the soul, it was only spirit, appetite and reason. Mm -hmm. And he believes that philosophers should be the ones who hold positions of power. That's what I just looked up. So, you know, it's just so interesting. Yeah, <laughs> it's interesting. And then I think I also like to remind everyone, Plato during that time, when he talk about, we can call him, you know, and uh, totalitarian, you know, authoritarian, authoritarian government, authoritative government or totalitarian. But remember during that time, he is not thinking about the Russian empire, Chinese empire, Persian empire. He think about a state, 5,040 people kind of state, okay? So 
uh, that's very different than we talking about 1 billion people or 200 million people. I think that's very different. So uh, I think we have uh, another 10 minutes. I would like to make a quick uh, go through another dialogue, uh, Tiberius, okay? I, and then probably I'm not going to go to the detail. I just want to, the reason I bring this one is it's very interesting, the Tiomeres, okay? First, Tiomeres probably the only Greek philosophy available during the, uh, probably the second uh, century in Roman, okay? Because they all lost, they don't know Aristotle. And then when they talk about Plato, they talk about Tiomeres, this one, because Cicero make a translation on this. So that's the only one they read. So uh, I probably don't have time to introduce this one in detail, but when we read um, uh, the Neoplatonic uh, philosophy, basically you will see it's a repeat on this one and they go to more detail. And eventually this one connect with Christian philosophy. So that's the number thing, number one, I think that's important. Number two, I find it's interesting is the read Plato wrote uh, Republic, it's 15 years, at least 15 years earlier than time years. So during this period of time, oh no, I'm sorry, five years, at least five years, we don't know how many years, but at least five years, five to six years. During this six year, Plato went to uh, Syracuse and tried to set up an ideal state, but he failed. Then he come back. And then he write this, start to write uh, a lot of later Plato dialogue. So Tiomeus is one of them. And when Tiomeus started, okay, he started with dialogue. Socrates say, one, two, three, four. Okay, he counted the people. And then uh, he said, uh, first is Tiomeus, Critias, uh, Heraclitus, four, who is, the number four, who were there yesterday? Okay, we don't know. We never know who is the number four people. And the Tamil say he is he was sick, so he didn't come. So suddenly start to talk about yesterday. We talk about the ideal state. So Tamil even written five or more years later is set up in the stage the second day of Republic. So Socrates talk about this one uh, is he's talking about the, the story, okay? We already talked about Republic, which is the ideal future Kalipodis, okay? Ideal state. Let's talk about the nature situation, okay? So he start to talk, ask them to explain what's going on in the nature. So there's a two story. One is the nature state, which is Critias going to talk about. That's the next uh, dialogue. And unfortunately, that dialogue is lost. So, uh, uh, no, the dialogue is unfinished, not because Socrates, uh, Plato didn't finish, because the final part are lost. So we don't know uh, what they are talking about, about Critias. Okay. But we have this one, uh, Timaeus, talking about the uh, the, genera the creation of universe and the uh, generation of man. So the Genesis, Genesis story. So Timaeus is going to talk about Genesis story. And the Timaeus, who is Timaeus? Timaeus is the Pythagorean uh, astrology or astronomer, okay? So mm -hmm. he is talking about this idea and then uh, how does the world start? So basically he's talking about start from, uh, you will see this one, it started from one and idea and the form, and then go start the word soul, and then you have a four element, and then word is created, uh, the, uh, then created the word, and then created the image of uh, time, and the create huh. a star. And the, the step by step, just like Bible's Old Testament, the uh, Genesis story. So uh, you will see, you know, for example, during that time, there, 
uh, idea of this world is Earth centered, right? We are Earth and the seven planet, and which is uh, that's the Earth and that's the Moon, that's the Sun and the, Merc uh, the Mercury, Mars, Jupiter, and the Saturn. Okay, then they have a star. So they talk about how does this one star and the four, uh, 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 four element, right? The fire will create the heavenly body, which is God. And then they have the air will create the birds and the water create the fish and the earth, that's the dead animal. So they keep going on and then you will see Plato's uh, geometry, mathematical training come to play here. He talked about the four elements is interchangeable. So all created by the right triangle. <laughs> so basics it's from water. They have the so-called uh, icosahedron. That means 12 right triangle, okay, make the solid. So when they decompose change, it will become L. That's uh, octahedron, okay. So that's the eight different tri eight triangle. Then will become five, which is tetrahedron, like a pyramid. Okay, and the Earth is not going to change with uh, other things. So that's all his ideas going on, and then like, how to create a human body, and then uh, go a bunch of number, time years, soul, and the body. So that's the story of this one. And I think I will find a proper time to introduce this one. And then I probably want to call uh, uh, to finish for today's uh, presentation. And let's leave a few minutes if you want to uh, discuss and then you have any question you know, on this one. And today I try to do is the last day for the <laughs> uh, Plato because uh, it's not good to talk too long about Plato. <laughs> so uh, next, uh, next week, I'm going to start with uh, Aristotle and let's get a different fresh idea. And I plan to use two to three weeks to talk about Aristotle you know, for next two weeks or three weeks. So any question, comment, suggestion, you know, let's have a few minutes, you know. Uh, uh, so it's interesting, the fire, air, water, earth business, it's almost like, um, you know, aromatherapy and all that jazz, they believe in that too. Yes, actually, actually this, I didn't go the detail. The, if you can go, we can go very long about, he used these four elements to explain everything. The world, also human feeling. For example, he talked about human body also built with these four elements. Yeah. So the element will change. So if you have, all the elements go to the right place. You feel happy, pleasure, comfortable. If the element like water will change to air, air change to fire. If you have a sudden change, that's why you feel pain. Okay. Some that's people have a temple, different uh, angry. So everything have a reason. They use these four yeah. elements to explain. Yeah, interesting. I enjoyed your class. I really did. Thank you, thank you. I try not to pick this one as a lecture or class, and I try to make this one a more uh, discussion. And thank you, Amy, to yes. jump in to ask question because uh, uh, I really like to have a question because uh, just like I said, not only myself, even Plato, his writing is only one side, okay? And uh, then you only express something, in wh what you can see, and always have a blind side, and I require, you know, I depend on you to tell me, you know, what's the question, which part is not reasonable. So we- Yes, can... yes. So uh, any other question or 